You better tell this man who I am, you better get him straight, tell this man who we messing with. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're ranking every Viola Davis performance. How's Donald doing? Uh, he's passing his subjects. He has average grades. Mm. Good. For this list, we'll be looking at this actress's most notable performances across film and TV. Given the towering size of her filmography, we'll be focusing on main and supporting roles rather than guest appearances, cameos, and pre-fame walk-on parts. What's your favorite Viola Davis performance? Let us know in the comments. Number 27. Viola Greer, aka Grandma, Get Rich or Die Tryin'. Released in 2005, this semi-autobiographical drama was intended to propel 50 Cent from rapper to actor. The reviews and box office didn't do much for his career, but it was an early indicator of Davis's potential. In one of her more substantial roles at the time, Davis plays the grandmother of Marcus. Can you watch him for an hour? Katrina, you know I'll watch him. Thank you. I don't want that money. Katrina said I don't need that money, he's family. Why you keep leaving him like this, Katrina? From a young age, Marcus is frequently left with his grandparents, which eventually turns into a long-term situation. While Mr. and Mrs. Greer do their best to raise Marcus, they struggle to keep him away from the crime world. Although we wish she had more screen time, Davis is reliably strong as a woman full of regret and disappointment. When I look in your eyes, I don't know what you're thinking. And you've been like that since you were 12, since the day your mama died. I'll be okay. No, you will not be all right, Marcus. Yet she never loses her instinct to protect those she loves. Number 26, Ellen, Medea Goes to Jail. We know what some of you are thinking. Oscar winner Viola Davis was in a Medea movie? It's true, but that's not what's surprising. What is surprising is the power that Davis brings to the at times goofy production. I gotta tell you, I, I think the job that you're doing with these girls is great. It's just me trying to do the work of my Lord. I know you make them proud. Oh, thanks again. While we get to see Tyler Perry do his over the top shtick, Davis couldn't be more believable as a former sex worker who turns her life around as a minister. Ellen dedicates her career to helping troubled girls and women. As someone who survived the streets, Ellen can be blunt when she needs to be, but she'll also give others space to express their feelings. How deep is your commitment to this girl, Josh? No, she's a friend. A friend? You know what a binge addict is? Yeah. Some would debate whether the dramatic and comedic scenes go together, but nobody can deny that Davis fully commits to her role. Number 25, Emma Trudeau, Beautiful Creatures. This gothic romance came out amid the peak of Twilight, and it shows in the execution. For many, the film fell short of Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll's novel, Bombing at the Box Office. At the very least, Beautiful Creatures gave us some fun performances. Where Jeremy Irons and Emma Thompson camp it up, Davis takes a more grounded approach as Emma, a seer who serves as a mentor to our young heroes. You don't need to take care of us, Emma. I promise your mother, and I want no, to. No, Emma. I'm sorry. I just... I don't think it's any of your business. Where'd you get that? The character is a composite of a librarian and maid from the book. Davis was grateful that the character wasn't a maid in this adaptation, with the librarian part preserved. As Emma, Davis is wise, maternal, and resourceful, bringing dignity to what can otherwise be a straightforward supernatural teen love story. This is a sacred place of my ancestors. You hear? You want some answers? You show me some respect. Yeah, I apologize. Number 24, Liz Ingram, The Unforgivable. While this Netflix drama wasn't the biggest critical hit, it emerged as an audience favorite accumulating over 85 million hours worth of views during its first week. This can largely be attributed to its cast, which includes a lead performance from Sandra Bullock and Viola Davis in a key supporting role. She wasn't shot at in some Kuwaiti firefight. She killed somebody in cold blood. Davis brings a great nuance to Liz, a woman who lives in a home once owned by Bullock's Ruth, who's fresh off a 20-year sentence. Liz's husband agrees to help Ruth find her estranged little sister. Liz objects, although Davis helps us to see where she's coming from. 
The animosity between Liz and Ruth builds to a powerhouse argument about second chances. Take I don't him give with a me. shit about your sister. She was taken away from you because of your choices. You have to live with that. Look, please don't talk to me about choices right now, okay? Listen, don't. no one forced you to kill that man or lie your way into my okay, house. Okay, you know what? Davis unearths Liz's compassion as she comes to see eye to eye with Ruth. Number 23, Delia Shiraz, Eat, Pray, Love. Julia Roberts leads this adaptation of the best-selling memoir as Elizabeth Gilbert, a middle-aged woman who is finally driven to get a divorce and see the world. As Elizabeth's best friend and editor Delia, Davis acts as a voice of reason. I have a box just like this, except it's filled with National Geographic's and the Times travel section. All the places I want to see before I die. Liz, having a baby is like getting a tattoo on your face. I kind of want to be fully committed. Delia lays down the various reasons why Liz's impulsive decisions might come back to bite her. At the end of the day, though, Delia supports her friend's choice to pursue more out of life. Davis finds just the right balance as a woman who's practical, but not judgmental. I am not checking out. I need to change. You have a support system here, Liz. You have friends and family who love you. And do you feel my love for you? My support for you? No, there's like nothing. I have no pulse. Even if she has reservations about Liz's plans, Delia remains her rock throughout. Number 22, Lila Walcott, Lila and Eve. Davis makes up one half of this crime drama's titular duo, starring as Lila opposite Jennifer Lopez's Eve. Both play mothers grappling with grief following the deaths of their murdered children. Where Lila tries to power through the five stages, Eve wishes to add a sixth. Revenge. Last time. Last time you messed up. That's what I was gonna say, okay? Last time I messed up. So this time, it's all you. If you wanna go, we'll go. If you wanna talk to them, we'll talk to them. The two soon find themselves taking the law into their own hands, with Eve being the wild card and Lila being the more pragmatic one, slowly getting in deeper than she anticipated. The deeper she gets, Lila finds that she has more in common with Eve than she ever imagined. Although the writing might prove divisive, the two actresses are exquisitely cast, with Davis in particular shining as a woman torn between acceptance and her true desire. I called about my son's case and no one got back to me, so I thought I'd come down. Uh, what, what case is it again? You, you, don't, you don't remember me? Sure I do. It's just I got a lot to keep track of. Number 21, Gail Friedman, Trust. Few actresses offer better emotional support than Davis. Her characters can be understanding, patient, and down-to-earth, but they also know when to speak up and lay down some tough love. Davis brings all of this to her role as Gail, a hospital counselor who meets with Liana Liberato's Annie, whose experiences online take her to some traumatic places. Like many 14-year-olds, Annie initially thinks she knows everything, making excuses when she's clearly being taken advantage of. I can understand how strong those feelings are, Annie, but there are reasons why girls your age and men his aren't supposed to be together. Whatever. He loves me. I know he does. Gail tries to help Annie see what's really going on between her and the much older Charlie, or so he calls himself in a chat room. Davis's character was named after Gail Abarbanel, the founder and director of the RTC. It's an inspiring performance worthy of the name. Number 20, Detective Parker, Disturbia. A modern spin on Rear Window, Disturbia centers on a young delinquent under house arrest who suspects his neighbor is up to no good. Davis makes the most out of a relatively small role as Detective Parker, who delivers Kale's ankle monitor. Red light flashes, you got 10 seconds to get your butt back to green or else. Or else what? The execution squad shows up? And they don't bring blindfolds. It's tamper proof and waterproof, so don't try to stick your foot in a bucket of water and hop across the line. It won't work and you'll look stupid. Although Parker is no nonsense, you don't get a sense that she's out to get Kale like some other authority figures. She wants to see Kale reform and tries giving advice to keep him out of trouble, but he's eventually forced to step out of line. With another performer in the role, this could have been a fairly run-of-the-mill part. With Davis, the character evolves from a vessel for exposition to a three-dimensional presence. I think you're the first one to ever get one of these things taken off early for good behavior. <laughs> good behavior? That's what I'm calling it. You got a problem with it, call somebody who cares. Good behavior. Number 19, Major Gwen Anderson, Ender's Game. 
If you ever need somebody to play a commanding authority figure, Davis should be on speed dial. Be it a mayor and law-abiding citizen, a CIA director in night and day, an FBI agent in black hat, or a judge in custody, nobody garners respect like Viola. Her turn as Major Gwen Anderson is no exception. We need a Julius Caesar, a Napoleon. We hope that will be you. Caesar was assassinated by the people he trusted. And Napoleon lost in the end. Not before he conquered the known world. Dismissed. Along with Harrison Ford's Colonel Graff, Anderson takes a special interest in the titular Ender, enlisting him for battle school. Where Graff takes a sterner approach, viewing Ender as a cadet above all else, Anderson sees that he's still a child whose emotions shouldn't be brushed off. While Anderson is second in command, she's more than willing to stand up to Graff, feeling responsible for the kids in her care. You really don't see them as children, do you? There used to be a war crime to recruit anyone under the age of 15. When the war is over, we can have the luxury of debating the morality of what we do. When it's over, what will be left of the boy? Number 18, Tanya Neely, The Architect. On Rotten Tomatoes, The Architect sits towards the bottom of Davis's filmography. Even when the material is underwhelming, Davis delivers a gravitas that elevates the entire production. Davis is authentic as always, as a woman trying to build a better community for her neighbors, her children, and herself. Look, it's not about public housing don't work, I'm not saying that. It's the architecture of the court that's working against us here. Tanya articulates what many others want to say, but they lack the words or determination. She hits roadblocks every step of the way, with her efforts often going underappreciated. We've all met somebody like Tanya, who never relents even as her arguments fall on deaf ears. If you say that they should be torn down, it would mean so much more, see? I mean, the architect of the original design? I mean, who's going to argue with the architect, right? Or Oprah. Had Tanya been the main focus, we feel the architect would have been better received. With the tools she's given to work with, Davis almost single-handedly builds a sturdier foundation. Number 17, Sybil, Far From Heaven. In recent years, Davis has expressed regrets about playing maids, which we can understand. We don't think Davis would accept a role in Far From Heaven today, but her character does play a subtle link between two worlds. Heavens. Well, I knew you were going to the grocery. <laughs> David, please help Sybil unload the car. As the title suggests, this period drama evaluates the idyllic 1950s, which actually weren't so ideal when you strip away the technicolor magic to reveal the repressed emotions. As Julianne Moore's Kathy falls for Dennis Haysbert's Raymond, Davis's Sybil senses the inevitable heartbreak. Change your mind. We're good. Sybil tries to stay out of her employer's business, but with a simple glance, Davis conveys what most audiences suspect. This time period isn't going to be kind to their interracial romance. Even with little dialogue, Davis says a lot. Number 16, Michelle Obama, The First Lady. This Showtime series assembles three generation of first ladies, with Gillian Anderson as Eleanor Roosevelt, Michelle Pfeiffer as Betty Ford, and Davis as Michelle Obama. Although these three come from different backgrounds, they each share more in common than simply being married to the president. It's not funny, Barack. There are men with guns outside our home. Do they say why now? Well, look, there, there, there have been some threats. They all changed the world for the better. Davis portrays Mrs. Obama as someone initially reluctant to get involved in politics out of concern for her family's safety. Once in the White House, though, Michelle isn't content with being a hostess. She uses her influence to improve health care, children's diets, and epidemics plaguing the nation. Valerie, you're my friend. You know what I can do? It's complicated right now. We of all people, we can't rock the boat too much. Yeah, I know. Davis has never been one to get sidelined, making her perfect to play a first lady who by no means lived in her husband's shadow. Number 15, Amanda Waller, Suicide Squad and The Suicide Squad. When we heard Davis had been cast as Amanda Waller in the DCEU, fans knew it was a match made in heaven. The bad news is that Davis debuted in Suicide Squad. We got lucky with Superman who shared our values. The next Superman might not. You're playing with fire, Amanda. I'm fighting fire with fire. The good news is that she was given a vastly superior script with THE Suicide Squad. 
Even in the lesser 2016 film, Davis was easily among the best aspects. Just listening to someone talk about supervillains isn't especially riveting, but nobody delivers exposition with more raw intensity than Davis. In the 2021 follow-up, Davis continues to shine as Waller emerges more ruthless, living by the phrase, the ends justify the means. I'm protecting this country. Everyone stand down. Miss Waller, I don't- STAND DOWN! I wouldn't take such extreme measures. Oh, extreme? Oh yeah, a little extreme. If this mission weren't more important than you could possibly imagine. It's easy to loathe Waller, but Davis captures the cunning nature that made the character such a scene stealer in the comics. Number 14, Abby Black, extremely loud and incredibly close. Following the events of 9-11, people tried to make sense of the tragedy. Oscar, a precocious boy whose father was at the World Trade Center, searches for closure by tracking down the lock to a mysterious key. He encounters numerous people along the way, the first being Davis's Abby. I wonder what they were feeling when they heard those calls. I don't know. Did they cry? Only humans can cry tears, did you know that? In her first scene, Davis juggles an assortment of emotions as she deals with a crumbling marriage and the young boy who suddenly appears at her doorstep. Despite her frustration, Abby opens up to Oscar and comes to recognize his grief as well. Although it seems like this will be the first and last time they meet, Abby plays a more substantial role in Oscar's journey than expected, putting both on a path to healing. I told you when you were here before I didn't know anything about the key. But you do. Well, my husband, ex-husband, had the estate sale you mentioned. So I think you should talk to him. Number 13, Dr. Gordon, Solaris. From a morgue doctor in State of Play, to a head physician in It's Kind of a Funny Story, to a professor in The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby, Davis's characters have quite the collection of doctoral degrees. Dr. Gordon likely has the most advanced degree, being qualified for a space mission. I was trained in physics. I was sent here to assess the economic potential of Solaris, whether or not it was a viable commercial property or a possible energy source. I was still compiling data when this shit started happening. Davis had already popped up in a few Steven Soderbergh films like Out of Sight and Traffic. Soderbergh's Solaris provided the meatiest showcase for Davis yet as a doctor who thinks with her head, offsetting George Clooney's Dr. Kelvin, who thinks with his heart. Gordon comes to see the emotionally driven Kelvin as a threat to the crew and Earth. How can you be so definitive about a construct that you do not understand? She's a copy, a facsimile, and she's seducing you all over again. You're sick! Although she can come off as cold, Gordon is consistently the most sensible person on board. Number 12, Nona Alberts, Won't Back Down. In some cases, Davis is the sole reason to check a movie out. In this film's case, there's one other reason, Maggie Gyllenhaal, who plays a mother juggling two jobs. She teams up with Davis's Nona, a teacher willing to fight for the inner city's neglected and mistreated students. Teach at Adams. When we first moved here, Nona made it a point to find the school we're most in need. That is so admirable. Very idealistic. She was. Well, I guess we both were. Won't Back Down is more well-intentioned than it is successful in bringing anything new to the topic at hand. Davis and Gyllenhaal bring just enough, however, to make the film stand out. The two actresses share an endearing dynamic, with Davis as a woman losing her spark before Gyllenhaal's Jamie reminds her why she became an educator. The point is, don't you want to have a say in what gets taught and how? I mean, we're the ones who know these kids. While the film is about the educational system, it's just as much about women taking control of their lives. Number 11, Miss Raylene, Troop Zero. Young protagonist Christmas Flint introduces Miss Raylene as an intergalactic warrior and the story's most intelligent person. The first part of that statement isn't exactly accurate, but the latter half is. I don't do nothing half-ass. I don't want to do anything with half an ass. You know, you're just setting yourself up for your little heart to get broke. No, set myself up to change my whole life. Christmas and her fellow members of the dubiously named Troop Zero just want a chance to shine. Raylene identifies with them, agreeing to be their troop mother. Just as the troop is full of misfits, Raylene takes an unconventional approach. She doesn't talk down to the kids, telling them like it is. 
Although Raylene can be almost brutally frank, she also proves nurturing, uplifting, and fierce in the face of adversity. Even if y'all don't win, you gotta show them that you're serious. Y'all serious? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma All right, let's get this, my booze. <sighs> Cookie selling bad. Blood makes the grass grow. We'd rank this performance on a scale from 10 to 0, but if the film proves anything, it's that numbers don't mean much. Number 10. Eva Mae Fisher – Antoine Fisher 2002 saw more movie audiences take notice in Davis, and this biopic arguably provided the best platform for her. Almost a decade and a half before Denzel Washington directed Davis to an Oscar-winning performance, the two collaborated on Antoine Fisher. Who was that, Eva? That's Johnny. No. It's Antoine Quentin Fisher. Davis is downright devastating as Antoine's mother, who gives birth as a teenager while facing incarceration. Although Davis is absent for much of the film, the reunion between the mother and son delivers on the buildup. Where Antoine is still standing strong, we see the toll that the past decades have taken on Eva May. While she can't bring herself to say much, Davis expresses all of her character's guilt, hesitance, and sorrow. For all these years, I wondered about you. I dreamed about you. Didn't you miss me? Antoine bears his soul, but his mother is too broken inside to confront the past. Number 9. Susie Brown – Get On Up Another biopic where she plays an estranged mother, Davis is given more screen time in Get On Up. The stage belongs to the late Chadwick Boseman's electrifying performance as James Brown, but Davis is equally powerful as his mother. I've been here for nine days with your child. Where you been? I've been working turpentine, baby. Been chipping trees. Gambling. What is this? Where the money at? Where the money at? You think I'm lying? You think I'm lying? I ain't lying! Should've never married you. When Susie Brown can take no more of her cruel husband, she struggles to take her son along. The audience is shocked when they cross paths again. Now a sex worker, Susie is unrecognizable from when we last saw her. James can still spot his mother from a crowd, but she treats him like a stranger. She doesn't re-enter her son's life until he becomes a success, igniting feelings of anger and shame. I never want to be no mama, but you were inside of me, I carried you, I had you, so I chose you. You chose me. I chose you. While Susie is easy to despise, Davis finds her humanity, almost summoning empathy. Number 8. Nancy Birch – Prisoners In this emotionally draining thriller, Davis's Nancy endures every parent's worst nightmare. On Thanksgiving, Nancy's daughter goes missing along with another young girl. Detective Loki is… honey? These photos are better than the ones my husband gave you. You can see her eyes more clearly. Although the story mainly focuses on one father's guilt and desperation, Prisoners also explores the agony that the mothers experience. When Nancy sees the extreme measures that the fathers have taken, she takes a more humane approach. She puts her own safety in potential jeopardy as she appeals to the captive suspect, balancing unbearable sadness with uncontainable bravery. Stepdad won't be got over she was too because she's afraid to sleep by herself. Please tell me where my little girl is. Nancy is a mother above all else in this moment, willing to do anything for her daughter while sympathizing with the tortured young man in her presence. Like the other parents, Nancy is a prisoner in her own right, a prisoner of grief. Number 7. Veronica Rawlings – Widows Almost two decades after playing an off-screen parole board officer who releases Danny Ocean, Davis starred in a completely different kind of heist movie. While Veronica is a resourceful woman, she never envisioned herself orchestrating a heist. Harry left me the plans for his next job. It's worth $5 million. I take $2 million, give it to the Mannings, we split the rest. You want us to… Pull off the job, yeah. Million apiece. That was her husband's department. When her husband is taken out of the picture and she's backed into a corner, Veronica steps up as the big boss, with a few other women who aren't that experienced with robberies. Learning through her husband, Veronica maintains a domineering presence. Why should we trust you anyway? Because I'm the only one standing between you and a bullet in your head. Because I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. Leave and you're on your own." Underneath that confidence, she's well aware that this could end with her either behind bars or six feet under. 
We sense Veronica's fear, but Davis masks it with such resilience that we'd take orders from her too. Number 6. Abilene Clark, The Help Although this Best Picture nominee also garnered her a Best Actress nomination, Davis has reservations about The Help in retrospect. While not the most complex exploration of race relations, the film's heart is in the right place and aspired to challenge some stereotypes. I want to interview you about what it's like to work as a maid. I'd like to do a book of interviews about working for white families. We could show what it's like to work for, uh, say, Elizabeth. You know what Miss Leaf would do to me if she knew I was telling stories on? Whatever your thoughts on the film are, it's hard to find fault in the ensemble, with Davis giving an especially gut-wrenching performance as a maid compelled to tell all. In a way, the film's ending mirrors an important turning point in Davis's career. Standing up to her oppressive employer, Abilene leaves with her head held high, choosing to retire. Don't go, baby. I got to baby. You give my sweet girl a chance. Davis was far from retired, but moving forward, she'd stop playing the help in favor of pursuing roles that evoke power. Number 5. Ma Rainey, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom Speaking of power, few figures in Davis's filmography possess more presence than blues icon Ma Rainey. This adaptation of August Wilson's play sets itself in 1927, a time when women of color had little control over their lives. Ma Rainey is an exception, with the recording studio having to play by her rules, even if it means halting a session to get her a Coke. What's the matter, Ma? Where's my Coke? I need a cold Coca-Cola. Uh, Ma, look. I forgot the Coke. Let's do it without it, huh? Just this one song. What say, boy? Damn what the band say. You're supposed to have my Coca-Cola. You knew that. To her credit, it was a very hot summer day, which shines through in Davis's performance. Beyond the sweat, tears, and makeup, Davis pours her soul into playing a singer who looks exhausted while also beaming with life. Reuniting with Chadwick Boseman for his final film, the picture encapsulates two acting legends at the top of their Oscar-nominated game. All they want in my voice. Well, I done learned that. And they're gonna treat me the way I wanna be treated no matter how much it hurt them. Number 4. Annalise Keating, How to Get Away with Murder Being an Oscar nominee, some were surprised that an actress of Davis's status would take on a network drama. With TV arguably developing more layered female characters, however, we can see what drew Davis to the small screen, especially with a part like Annalise Keating. I don't know what terrible things you've done in your life up to this point, but clearly your comments out of balance to get assigned to my class. I'm Professor Annalise Keating, and this is Criminal Law 100. An attorney and law professor who doesn't shy away from her sometimes unethical tactics, Annalise was a role of a lifetime, making Davis the first black recipient of the Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series Emmy. Davis runs the gamut as a character who can blur the lines between hero, villain, and anti-hero. You tore a community Keating. apart. Ms. You Keating. tore families Keating. apart. Keating. You destroyed lives, Ms. Senator. Keating. Admit it. Ms. Admit you killed Trisha Stanley and had my client David Allen set up for her murder. Whichever label you choose, we root for Annalise even at her most merciless. As assertive as Annalise is, Davis also infuses the character with vulnerability. Number 3. Rose Lee Maxson, Fences Davis and Denzel Washington both won Tony Awards for their hard-hitting performances in a revival of August Wilson's play. When Washington decided to immortalize their performances on the silver screen, many predicted that Davis would at long last add an Oscar to a mantle. Indeed, Davis deservingly found herself just a Grammy away from an EGOT with this emotional roller coaster. You gotta drink yourself to death. You don't need to be drinking like that. Oh! Oh, death ain't nothing. I done seen him. I done wrestled with him. You can't tell me nothing about death. Davis plays a faithful housewife who attempts to keep the peace in her chaotic home. While Rose Lee remains loyal throughout, she's eventually prompted to sink her sharp-tongued words into her alcoholic, adultering husband. In what might be the most masterful scene of her career, Davis unleashes all of her character's sadness, rage, regret, disappointment, and strength in a tidal wave of superb acting. And now you want to drag you behind in here and tell me something like this? Stop it now. You ought to know. It's time for you to know. Well, I don't want to know, goddammit! Number 2. Mrs. Miller, Doubt 
Although Davis is in doubt for barely eight minutes, she leaves such an impact that it feels as if she's on screen for much longer. Whether or not you consider this her breakthrough performance, you can see why the role earned Davis her first Oscar nomination. My husband didn't want Donald to come here. Why? He thought he'd have trouble with the other boys, but that hasn't really happened. Good. That priest Father Flynn been watching out for him. Holding her own against an equally astonishing Meryl Streep, Davis is heartbreaking and haunting as the mother of a son possibly being targeted by a priest. Although Mrs. Miller can at first seem uncaring, she's actually trying to keep her son alive above all else. Even if Sister Aloysius's suspicions prove true, Miller fears that her son may face even worse treatment from his homophobic father. You hurt my son to get your way. It won't end with your son. Throw the priest out then. I am trying to do just that. Then what do you want from me? Torn between two horrible options, Miller leaves Aloysius and the audience shaken. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. General Naniska, The Woman King It feels as if Davis's career has been building towards playing General Naniska, a beacon of empowerment. Leading a female group of warriors in West Africa, Naniska commands the respect of her fellow soldiers and the king that she protects. When it rains, our ancestors weep for the pain we have felt in the dark hulls of ships bound for distant shores. Be it on the battlefield or in training, Naniska rarely lets her defenses down. As she grows closer to a young newcomer, played by Tusu Umbedu, we see a different side of Naniska that even she didn't know existed. I am a general. I have earned it. You have earned nothing. I should put you out. Mm. I have watched soldiers die because they did not have discipline. Their easy life did not prepare them for- I did not have an easy life! There's an Ogogia. Whether driven by orders or emotions, Naniska is iron-willed in the face of every challenge. A title like The Woman King deserves an actress of a royal caliber. Only Davis could do this role full justice, turning in a performance as epic as the movie itself. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.